are you? Hi. Chilling out. <laughs> Thank you. Just so finished much. eating some other content. So I was like, yeah, I'm done. And it's like, no, you're not. You're not oh. done. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All good. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Azia, for doing this. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, we have our, our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Nice. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I did see you were uh, raised in Charleston, now in LA. Um, were you born yes. and raised there? I was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Okay. And I was raised in both of the Carolinas, actually, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Charleston, South Carolina. And then I moved to Atlanta for an extended period of time. Then I moved to L.A. Very cool. So I've been all okay. over the place. <laughs> How did you get into music originally? I started music at a very young age. Um, I started because um, my mom just started putting me like in a bunch of competitions locally. And I started, and I was winning them all. And I was like wow. nine um and then i was singing like the national anthem at like charlotte hornets games and what? all that type of stuff <laughs> and then um i actually won a competition called carolina idol okay <laughs> had their own version and was in the carolinas and i won the whole thing like overall even the adults like i beat everybody wow. and the prize was to go to atlanta and meet some producers and some labels and modeling people and i did all that and then i ended up working with one of the first producers i met um and signing with them to sony really DCMA. Sony. And so how, I, I was signed nine, at 15. Oh, 15. I was, at, that, at that point, I was 15. So my first deal was 15. Oh, my gosh. And that was with original material? Or they just knew that you're a great that, singer? No, um, we started recording and making music together. So the producer and oh, okay. um, my big bro, choir boy, um, James Bennett, um, he taught me how to like write songs. So I started writing with him because I had a passion for writing at a young age. Like I wrote my first song when I was like nine. Oh I won't, gosh. I won't sing it for you. It's horrible. <laughs> but you still remember it. But I do really? remember it, unfortunately. It was I'm an earworm. It stuck with you. <laughs> you know, growth is great. We love growth. Sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of where that started and um it just kind of wow. took off from there wow wow okay i want to hear about the singing contest real quick so you and these contests so obviously you're very good at singing and did your parents re realize that it, obviously at a very early age like were you my mom realized it she said she realized it when i was two because <laughs> I was like, I would just be like singing and singing word, like singing gibberish, but it sounded good, but it was like no real sentences and, and, and carrying on. But one time, I don't know what age I was, but Mariah Carey was playing on TV. Um, and I might've been watching MTV and Mariah Carey was on it. And I was singing with Mariah Carey and my mom was yelling down, turn the TV down. And my sister was like, that's not the TV. Oh my god! And gosh. that's when my mom knew, knew that I was really about this life. She was like, oh, well, so you can, you can, you can sing. <laughs> Did you just hit that whistle note? Yeah. Where's the competitions? Where are the competitions? Because we put her in the competition. Are you We've ready got to a star. <laughs> we got a star on our hands. And I hated rehearsing. And I used to get on my mom's nerves. She'd make me rehearse. And I'd, to, I'd come from outside playing, be all pissed and like right. rehearse. And then I would never, like, I think to spite her, I would never do what I did in rehearsal at the show. <laughs> I would always do something different. And she just, <laughs> but I would still win. I'm like, see, I got this. I don't oh have to do God. all that rehearsing. Yeah. Rehearsing is important, guys. Make sure you rehearse. Don't just not. <laughs> okay. I was just being bad. That's all. <laughs> What what songs are you singing in the contest? Ooh, um, one I really remember was I Get So Lonely, Janet Jackson. Cool. Um, Denise Williams, Silly. Uh, ooh, what else did I, I man, Deborah Cox. Okay. Um, How Did I Get Here? I was singing the <laughs> Belty songs where I was just okay. singing. And all yeah. the other little kids were like doing like the teeny bopper stuff. And then I came mm. out singing with a grown woman voice and they're just like, <laughs> she wins, yeah, she's right. got it. <laughs> oh, that is cool. 
what winning the the whole Carolina's idol that like was that like multiple <laughs> like rounds I'm sure you had to get through these certain it actually why is there multiple rounds I'm trying to think I don't remember it's so long ago I'm like I do remember having it at a theater mm -hmm. and I had to perform twice no there was okay so there was an audition round and then whoever they picked from the audition round went to the final um and that's where they had the big show where everybody you know paid and got tickets and came mm -hmm. and watched and all of that stuff but like they did age categories and then they had an overall winner so i oh, won my okay. age category and then i won overall overall very cool <sighs> the grown-ups were pissed <laughs> i bet <laughs> So you, for, for winning the contest, they took you to uh, Atlanta to meet people, meet, meet different. I went, I came to people. LA first. Oh, you came to LA I first. Like some, I came to LA first, but then we ended up, we went to Atlanta as well. And so the whole prize was to like, just meet people. And the lady who did the entire show wanted to manage me. So she's like, okay, let's, let's go make some rounds. Let's meet some people. Let them hear you sing and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, and see what happens. And that's where it all went Stop. down. Wow. Wow. Was that it your, crazy. <laughs> it did get crazy. You're, um, so like from that show, was that your first time like playing on a big stage? I'm sure there's quite a few people there at the mm -mm. Carolina It actually Island. wasn't. I, I would, my first big, big, big situation was the Hornets games because they're, oh, yeah. everybody went to the oh, basketball game. Yeah, tell and me about like that. That's, How did you get those gigs? That's crazy. I don't even know how that happened. I just know <laughs> that I had on my little church dress and my little church shoes and my little ruffle socks. And then I'm standing with the microphone and the guy says, and now introducing Asian Bryant. And so I'm little and I don't know. And I'm in the mic. I said, but they said my name wrong <laughs> in the mic. Oh, you and everybody, mic start, everybody. everybody started laughing all over the arena. That's I went out awesome. there and I sang and they weren't expecting that. And then um, there was like standing ovation. The the players came and gave me high fives and stuff. Wow. And I was like, oh, wow, I can do this forever. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. You better sing. You know, all that stuff is happening in the background. <laughs> right, and right. And I'm just like, huh. I'm like, wow. I like this. That is cool. Wow. And then, I mean, signing a record deal at 15 years old, that's insane. I used to go, I don't know what's wrong with my mom. I just need to check on her a bit because she let me go on a Greyhound bus every other weekend or so from Charleston to Atlanta by myself to record. <laughs> And looking back at it, I was excited because, you know, I'm like, oh, I get to go work. But then, like, now I'm an adult and I'm like, mom, why did you do that? Right. That was so safe. <laughs> so many things could have went wrong. <laughs> but, you know, thank God nothing did. But I definitely have my Greyhound Bus Chronicles that I could probably write. <laughs> the Greyhound Bus Chronicles. <laughs> I, I can write. So with those songs that you're writing... Uh, at 15 for for the for the label did you release any of that did it ever come out I'm i release um we released some songs um i don't i don't think we really released release until like a few years later i had a song out in the carolinas that just like blew up to like number one um and it was like oh, beating really? all the the radio like you know have like those those radio jams where they like put yeah. battle some songs against yeah, each other. Like, I beat everybody. They had to retire my song because nobody could beat it. Oh my God. And that's amazing. it was so funny because like it was right after it was was it right after high school? It was right after high school. And before that, I could never bring my songs home because people used to steal music and put it up on Napster and whatever oh, else. Right. And so I was recording out of Ludacris's house. <laughs> really? My I had Ludacris <laughs> on my demo. What? <laughs> I have a crazy story now when, when I actually go back and tell it. It's like, you know what? You, You're 15 you, at Ludacris' house? Yes, oh at Ludacris' God. house. That um, is insane. Recording stuff. And um, I couldn't bring any of the songs back. And so, like, oh, no. Oh, it's, I can hear you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh. Um, so like, um, 
none of my friends believed that I was doing any of the stuff that I was doing. Like sure. they didn't believe I was recording at Ludacris's house. Yeah, they didn't like, think sure. we all kicked it and hung out sure. and played <laughs> pinball with each other. Like they did not, they were like, you're lying. And one day they all like teamed up on me, like in the corridor, right before we went to chorus <laughs> class. And I was like, you're always lying. All you do is lie about all the stuff that you do. And I was, I was so heartbroken. Yeah, I was yeah. like, dang, this is like mean girls. But like, oh, hold on. Let me put my, let me actually put my phone on. Do not disturb. Oh, no problem. Blown right, up. Blown up. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disturbed and so hurt. I was like, what is going on here? And then that summer, after I graduated, I was able to bring all the songs home and they could hear them and they were like, uh, they're like, what now? <laughs> and then my song was out on the radio, then it was beating everybody, then it was like number one. And they were just, I was just like, well. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I get it. Like being that age and not being able to see something tangible that, you know, right. this person is talking about, like, there's no way she's doing this stuff. I'm like, ask my mom. She'll mm -hmm. tell you. Right. But they didn't want to ask her, of course. She's like, I'm not asking your mom. But yeah. it was just so funny, like, to see the tables turn. Like, I always knew you could do it. We were so proud oh, of you. Yeah. And by that point, I was like, you're not even my best friends anymore. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. I'm sure they were knocking on your door after that saying, oh, hey, like, if well, they're in chorus, too, like, how do you get me involved in the... Well, see, the thing is, like, literally... <laughs> The day of graduation, I didn't walk the stage. I didn't go because oh, wow. I opened up for Ludacris and Kanye in Tennessee <laughs> on my graduation day. Oh, my God. So it was kind of <laughs> like everybody can walk the stage, but not everybody can open up for Not these everybody two. can walk, walk the stage with Kanye in Ludacris. No, so I think, I, I, think I, I think I'll just, you know, say whatever to that. Graduate <laughs> high school, who cares? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that's for real. I, I, moved, I literally moved right after that to Atlanta, like okay. at 17. Like I was gone. I was like, oh, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Wow. And then so with those, that song that blew up and all, and, and all that was happening, what were you like after opening the show with Kanye and Ludacris? Like, did you keep doing the, um, you know, as a, pursuing yourself as an artist? Because I know that you've written a bunch of songs, too. I'm sure that I came in a, a play at um, some point. I did, but I wasn't getting the reception that I thought I would at that age. And then also, I didn't know who I was, really. So I was mm -hmm. singing songs that didn't really fit me, I don't feel like, and who I was. But I didn't know who I was either. So it yeah. was kind of like... Who does this, 17? <laughs> how am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to be singing, you know? Right. Um, and I wasn't really secure with my sexuality then also. Mm -hmm. So I was singing about guys and I didn't really mean it. It was just like, sure. this is stupid. I hate this. I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I ended up taking a break and leaving the label after a while. I think I was like 22, okay. maybe. Ended up leaving the label. And um, I took a break just to like refocus and figure out what I wanted to do. Like, I, I just, I couldn't figure out which route to go. And then when I came back to Atlanta, cause I went back to Charleston for like a year and I came back to Atlanta, mm -hmm. I started as a writer because I no longer had the machine behind me. I no longer had the label and all those people, but everybody remembered me and how talented I was. So people were just receptive and open to me just writing. And then I just started writing any and everything. Mm -hmm. I wrote every genre you could possibly think of country rock r&b like i went there but i i like so many different genres of music and i felt like well i can write these so well i should sell them like i don't want to limit myself in my creativity so why don't i just sell the stuff that i won't use and that's what i started doing oh my gosh well tell Literally. me about, you said you're writing in a bunch of different genres was that just kind of on your own you're like eh, i feel like you know like it's had like something in your head and you're like oh that could work for a rock song yeah, or i had a, work um, for a country song or whatever i have a producer friend his name is josh monroe and he just used to produce so many different genres and whenever he would i'm like yo give me that give me that track give me that i'm gonna write something to it and we would just cut songs to every type of beat that he had and oh, okay. it let me explore my creativity it let me really branch out and be able to express myself in other types of music that I like. Um, mm -hmm. 
and that's how that started. But it also really made my pen game crazy after that. Like, cause I just, I mean, I'm not a person to just start making music and not study the genre that I'm working on. And um, in, in general, I studied music in general before trying to really dabble into being a real artist, but to write different genres, I definitely went back and studied and listened to some better artists that I knew. I'm like, oh, okay. I see how they're they're making their songs. I see they they are putting a hook court like a a hook verse one, hook mm. verse two, hook bridge. Oh, I'm just I'm just like watching their song concepts, and I'm I'm just listening and soaking it in. And then I just started to write myself, and that's wow. when I started doing all the different genres. And it's crazy because the like I at a point. I feel like I worked with every producer in Atlanta and I hit a ceiling and I was like so bored, like, ugh, I'm not inspired anymore. And then I got a placement. My first placement was on Def Jam Japan's, um, oh, what's her name? AI. And it was okay. a song featuring Lloyd, <laughs> the singer. And then my second placement was Miley Cyrus. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okay, so maybe I can do this. this I'm time. pretty good at this. <laughs> do this. And then at, at the same time, I picked up a, a Kmart commercial because I released my own Christmas album. Okay. And I just released it. And then they called me like, hey, we want to put this on a Kmart commercial. And I did wow. like, a, um, like a, a hip version of Carol of the Bells. And it went crazy every time i would like google it people like who sings this song is this rihanna or is this beyonce i don't know which one it is it was like um but glad you like it <laughs> <laughs> sure i think wow, a so lot of money from that kmart commercial bless kmart <laughs> i know they're not even around anymore are they i feel like there's a few every once in a blue moon but not really now, I'm in San Diego. I, I, there was like three of them that I, could, uh, that I can remember where they were, but they're not Kmart anymore. They're yeah, I don't even know. I, I haven't really been out. Of course, I've, nobody's really been out. Out, out right. Like, I haven't been out this year to know and go by where I know there's, there was one. I don't even know. Like, I have to, like, drive by or something. <laughs> sure. Get out on the road just to find the Kmart. Let me just, go, let me just go and see if there's any Kmarts out here. <laughs> Google works too. I could always yeah, Google that, Map and just see if there's a Kmart. It would tell me a it's a good gone. alternative. <laughs> yeah. wow. You know, yeah, let's save electricity. <laughs> let's not do that. Wow. So you so Miley Cyrus is your second song that you that you had placed. Second placement. Featuring wow. Ludacris. Full circle. <laughs> oh my god. And what did you write? What part of the song did you write the the whole piece or like how I does that wrote work? I I wrote hooks and verses. So she ended up at first it was supposed to be a song for Ludacris featuring Miley Cyrus, but she loved it so much she wanted it on her album featuring Ludacris. So um, I just started by doing the hooks and then I did some verses and then um, after that uh, I want to say Sam Hook, another writer got into it with, uh, got and started writing some stuff or changing whatever stuff she wanted changed around. And that was that one. And of course, Chris did his own verses. Mm -hmm. But that's still, that's amazing to be able to write that much of the song and then have, sell, you know, have somebody like her. On the Bangers it. album. Yeah. Oh my God. Mike oh, Will made it. That, that's the record <laughs> that it made. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and we got, and we got nominated for a best pop vocal album that year. For a Grammy. For a Grammy. Oh, Hands in the Air. Is that the song? Yep, that's the song. Wow. Amazing. That's so cool. And it was up for a Grammy, you said? Best pop vocal album. Wow. Did you get to go to the Grammys? I did not. Uh, yeah, the Grammys are a lot. Are they? <laughs> they're a lot. And they're expensive. Lot? Oh, okay. They're expensive. I was still trying to work it out. They're expensive. Uh, I was like, I'm not really nominated. She is, you know, like... Mm. I'll just get my little participation plaque and put it up. That's tight though. I mean, even have that. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So the Miley Cyrus thing happens. And then did that just blow the doors open for you as far as like getting it in It definitely did. And then what also blew the doors open for me is I came out to LA and I would just stay here for like a month at a time and just work with new producers. And because I wasn't being stimulated and I wasn't inspired anymore in Atlanta because I'd just been there for so long. Um, and I was like, 
well, it, LA is pretty expensive. So why am I staying here and paying rent in Atlanta? This is dumb. I'm leaving. So I moved, <laughs> I moved. Um, but right before I moved, I did a whole bunch of songs with DJ Mustard. Like I got in with him and we just did like eight songs, just like really quick. And uh, those ended up going to J-Lo. Wow. We did, <laughs> we did girls. <laughs> I did girls um, for her AKA album with J Lo, and then um, I'm guessing she loved me and I loved her. You know, she's J Lo. She's like J Lo, yeah. fine. Like, she's right. crazy. <laughs> um, but she had me. She was in Atlanta, and she had me come to the studio to write for Booty. Okay. Which, which um, Chris Brown originally started. And I went in and added to that. And so then we co-wrote Booty for Jayla. Oh, so, so he started the record with her and then you yeah. kind of tapped in and then helped her or finished it. So to speak. Mm -hmm. wow, oh my gosh. Well, did you, I mean- And I did backgrounds on it. I'm like singing all through that thing. It was fun. Whoa, that's cool. Was that the first time you actually got produced the on there? I, I'm sorry? Was that the first song that you actually got to put your voice on and stuff? And the as far as yes, that one. People? Did I put song on girls? No, I had I had backgrounds on background vocals on girls as well. Okay. Um, girls, and I think it was featuring Tyga on that one. I think for girls, for Jayla. Man, I've done a lot of songs in my days. <laughs> yeah. They're starting to they're starting to cross sure. into each other. Um, but yeah, I did that one. I actually got to vocal produce her, which was really dope and very inspirational for me. Like, because it was like, you see this bomb woman who has children, who is coming in from rehearsal from something. She's got a whole residency going on in Vegas. She's in here doing this. And like, I'm like, yo, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> Cause she's like doing everything and I be tired and I'm like, yo, I, I gotta get it together. So that just made me, it inspired me to just go for everything and not just stick with one thing because it's cool. Like you, I have so many other talents that it's like, I need to jump into everything and do all the things that I actually want to do. And mm -hmm. so I started. When you said um, you got to vocal produce for, for JLo, does that mean that you got to like, kind of give her point or like, how did, what do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, we literally sat, we sat in the studio and um, we were, she was singing the, the the words, the songs, and I would tell her how to do it, where to do it, and we put it together. I was literally there. Oh my God. Me and Corey so, Rooney. That's so rad. So you did a bunch, I mean, you've been writing for, for artists for a while then, and then you decided to go oh, wow. obviously back to be uh, Yeah, I missed artist. it. I missed being artist, and I miss not having a voice for what I was going through. Like music has always been like a, a coping tool, a therapy tool for me. So mm -hmm. I was going through a rough time and um, I lost my father. Oh. Um, and then me and my fiance broke up. It was just like a whole slew of stuff just felt like it just kind of down mm -hmm. on you. And then I really broke down for a moment. I couldn't write anything actually. Um, I, took a, I took like a year off and I didn't write a thing for anyone because I, I knew oh, wow. that I didn't have any emotions and without emotions, I can't write. So that was like the time I wrote my first wax song other than when I was nine. <laughs> I wrote my first wax song and I was like, oh God, this is not it. I can't, I can't, I can't tarnish my good name out here because I'm depressed. So, <laughs> so let you me go knew, take care of this. Did you just write it for yourself or are you writing it? I was writing for another it? artist. Okay. I was writing for another artist <laughs> and I was like, this is not the look that I want to go with. So I'm going to go <laughs> and come back when I'm ready. And it just so happens that when I was able or ready to start creating again, I was creating Love Train, um, oh, the wow. series. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the first thing I did when I came back was drop that. Wow. So that you put out the first, the first EP? Installment. Was, mm -hmm. okay. wow. Love Train. And, and then, then, you know, it's about love and getting yourself through breakups and second chances and all that stuff. And I feel like I had gone through it and then healed myself. So then I could sing about it from different perspectives like I find that when you're creating things when you're in the middle of it I'm just bringing that negative energy to whoever's listening to it but I'm not giving you any recourse of how to get out of it I'm not giving you anything else and I don't like to do that with my music I like to if I'm gonna bring you to an emotional place I want to take you to a positive place as well mm -hmm. um 
so that's when I created Love Train, and it started from there. And wow, voila, you- we're back. And I also, I also dropped it just to see if I had space, if there was space for me in this world as an artist singing about women mm-hmm. and love and relationships. If I would be accepted, because that was the first time I I sang about what my actual life was about. Mm-hmm. You know, um, before when I was younger, it was just whatever the label wanted. But then now I came into myself and I knew who I was and I was very unapologetic about it. And no, I'm not going to change she to he to make you mm-hmm. comfortable. Like, what? Sure. Get out of my face. And that's when I did it. I just said, I don't know if I can curse, but. You can. I said, fuck it. And then. <laughs> <laughs> I said fuck it and I and I put it out and people really loved it like I got so many inspirational messages from people like oh my gosh I'm so happy I don't have to change any of the words in this song and I still and I feel it and then even for for guys they were like oh my god bitches ain't shit and you just sang about it and they don't <laughs> never sing about that <laughs> guys like it because they can sing the words and not change anything either because i'm saying girl and they would want to say girl so they're (laughs) able to get in touch with their emotional sides when i (laughs) yeah i see that too i feel like that is with uh tegan and sarah too they have they're like a lot of males yeah they go to and and love their i love their music but love it because it's they can relate to it you know, in the same yeah. regard. So they, don't have to, they don't have to change anything. It's like, I knew, I remember I got one DM, he's like, I knew these, ho- his his words exactly was, I knew these hoes wasn't shit, but you just confirmed it. <laughs> I was oh, like, gosh. yikes. I was like, don't close your heart off. You might've just gotten a few bad apples. <laughs> right, wow. <laughs> so when you put the, did you know like writing, writing the Love Train series or eps um did you know that those were going to be your songs like when you when you wrote one out were you like i can't pitch this because this is too my too much my story what's what's crazy about the love train series it was like maybe one or two songs that i actually wrote for someone else that made that project but everything else was tailored just for it okay and i knew like i wasn't writing for anyone else at that time um, I was just writing for myself and I was just writing from a place of wanting to make myself feel whole and accomplish something that I wanted to do that doesn't concern or have to do with anyone else. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, it's, it's, it's a different vision when you know, you, your love and passion is to be on stage and to be an artist, but you create songs for other artists to blow up and sing all over the world. You're just like, I'm I sure. want to do that too. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> I was like, okay. If I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back doing things how I want to do them. And that just came from growing and realizing that I can't please everyone and I can't do everything to make everyone else happy. I have to do things that make me happy. And that was one of the major ways that I did that for myself. Mm -hmm. And with with uh, you had two pieces that came out like a couple of years apart. Did you have did you write all those songs in one, you know, no, I wait to release the other. Mm -mm, I experienced life in between. Okay. Um, So I had things to write about. Like everything on Love Train and Love Train 2 are my life and what happened in my life. Oh, okay. Sure. I literally just experienced things. And once I got through them or wherever I felt comfortable, then I wrote about them. And it it just kind of panned out that way. Oh, wow. Okay. So like Lost in London, those are all like... Real songs. (laughs) Oh, wow. That one's... uh... That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I always get questions about that one. Like, so, you know, now that we've listened to the song, we've had some time to sit with it. Were you actually in London or was the girl's name London? Or were you in London and her name was London? I was like, yeah. I guess you'll never know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's Who knows? awesome. <laughs> was Love Train, is that going to be a three-part series? It's- or? Definitely going to be a three-part series. There's okay. going to be a Love Train 3. There's going to be a finale of this whole shenanigan. I was wondering. Okay, so you had the first one out in, in 2017, then 2019 was the What's crazy two? is Love Train 2 was done in twenty at the beginning of 2018, like January. So I was oh, ready to release geez. it then, but I was signing a new deal. And so it took some time to sort all that stuff out and, you know, 
that takes so much time. And then you have to figure out your rollout, do your videos and blah, blah, blah. So it, lo it literally took like a year to get all that stuff together, but it was done. I was ready to drop it in 2018. I was like, I'm let's uh. go. And they're like, no, <laughs> slow down. Okay, <laughs> let's think this through, sweetie. We know you'd like to just put out all your music at one time, but we're not gonna do that. <laughs> Same thing with the interlude. The interlude, most of the songs were done last year. Oh, interesting. So okay. we're just starting to release them now. And I mean, but you know, Gucci COVID frames happened. Is a piece of... Yeah, Gu okay. Gucci frames happened last year. Um, but like COVID happened and a lot of things happened. So it was just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's the best way to do this and um, the smart way and have mm -hmm. a real rollout as well. Sure. With uh, the, Were you performing live uh, as you know, once you've released the Love Train EPs? Yes, I, I, I performed, I did I did uh, two tours um, in 2019. I did a tour with my label mate, Neomza. And then I did another tour where I opened for PJ Morton, which was very, very interesting because he has a very um, inspirational crowd. <laughs> and <clears throat> I was singing about sexing on ladies and stuff and loving on them so mm -hmm. <laughs> that was fun <laughs> <laughs> interesting yeah painting their ears <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> but no it, it was it was actually a really great learning experience i was so used to being in front of crowds who knew my music who knew me and i didn't have to turn them into a fan because they were already fans um this showed me uh, a side of myself or maybe help me grow a side of myself of, of getting in front of people who were uncertain or didn't like what I'm singing about and me mm -hmm. still making them a fan anyway. So yeah. that was the best part about that tour was just getting through that and being able to really turn people who were would otherwise not be interested in any of my music into actual fans because Thanks. I actually put on a great show and I sing very well. So they were like, oh, you can sing. You ain't like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can sing. Cause like his, when I tell you, he has whole choirs and everything that come out to the show. So they are like singing. They're giving you all the harmonies, and it was such a blast. It was so fun because once they they liked me and they're like, okay, she can sing. We like her. Yeah, she's singing about girls. I mean, every once in a while, you'd have an auntie in the back like, did she say she? <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like right in the front row and I'm like, I can hear you. <laughs> You're like, yes, I did. <laughs> I said she, I said her. I sang, sang about that nasty stuff yeah that was me but it's like you know just because you're you you're very church going does not mean you don't do the nasty right exactly we all grown here how you got them kids <laughs> right exactly <laughs> don't do this auntie let's just be just love me i love you unconditionally and let's just do this together right <laughs> wow so you did that tour that's cool and then have you what about uh for the love train too did you tour that record oh or no, no that, that was, was that was, was the those were the tours sorry. yeah, yeah the love train sorry too. i got confused cool <clears throat> love train i didn't really i did some shows i didn't do too many out to see if i had if there was space for me in the industry mm -hmm. um in general oh we're frozen uh, we're frozen can you hear me i can hear you can you hear me Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, it was just really okay, to see cool. if there was Perfect. space for me. And um, once I saw there was space, I was like, okay, uh -huh. okay. I did one big concert in LA and they were like, yes, finally. And then I was ready. I was already ready with Love Train Do. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. Who's ready? And then they were like, no, you gotta wait. <laughs> so okay. I had to wait. But then I started touring and, and now they've not, probably not. seen so much of me in LA, they're probably sick and tired. <laughs> they're never so and now tired. you have a, a new record coming out yeah well if you're bringing them hits they're not gonna be tired you know no, i'm never not doing that all right so gucci frames just hits, dropped not... i'm sorry uh -huh. oh i lost oh, you. i was saying they're not gonna they're not gonna tell you to leave uh, can you see me Hello. you're frozen oh can you see me or hear me I can hear you, but you, you were breaking up at first. Oh, okay. Am I good now? Or is it still yeah. shoddy internet? Okay. Oh, I was, I forgot what I was asking you. 
Um, oh, I was saying if you're if you're writing hits, they're not going to tell you to leave LA. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. They're not going to hate. They're, they're <laughs> cool with it. They're cool with it. Right. Oh, when well, your do not disturb doesn't work because your mom is calling. <laughs> answer, mom. No, she's good. If she if she, if she was like okay. freaking out, she'd like hit me back. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Are we all good? <laughs> Sorry. I think it's I can like hear you. You're still frozen, but I can hear you. Okay. If you can hear me, that's good. I was going to, okay. So you want to tell me a little bit about the, the new song you just released, Gucci Frames? Gucci Frames. It's just so posh. It's so feeling yourself. It's so like putting up your boundaries and keeping those people away who don't deserve to be in your life. And that's really what the metaphor for Gucci frames is. It's, it's basically a boundary, like putting up a wall and keeping those people out who have wronged you in some way. Not saying we don't forgive, we always forgive, but that doesn't mean everyone needs accessibility to you or needs to be in your life, if that makes sense. So um, no, totally. that's, really what, that's what Gucci frames is about. It's about holding yourself to your higher standards and putting up your boundaries and then holding yourself accountable for those things and those people and letting them go so you can thrive and be bomb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and there's, my, those are going to be this. I'm sorry. I can't see either my Gucci frames. Like someone's talking to me, but I'm not sure. I can't hear them. Maybe. Nah, I don't see anyone. Uh, is that song going to be on a, an EP or a, an album? It is going to be on an EP. EP. Tell me about the EP. E the EP is called The Interlude, and it's basically okay. a break from the Love Train series. We're taking our first stop off of the Love Train, and we're going to go live <laughs> some life and remember who we are and get back in our bag and get drunk, have fun. <laughs> we're going to invite people into our world, but we're also going to let them know, listen, I know exactly who I am. Be careful how you carry me or you can be bye-bye. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the interlude is giving. I'm just giving people other sides of myself other than just about love and heartbreak because it, there's more to life than just love and heartbreak. You know, like we have mm -hmm. to live life and figure out the things we want and the things we don't want. And the only way to do that is to date and have fun and just live. And mm -hmm. so the interlude is just about just living and remembering who you are. I love it. And then, so the interlude is going to be the time between the final love train. Yeah, record. We're, we're taking okay. we're taking a stop. We're not just love training it all the way through. No, <laughs> we're gonna take we're a break. <laughs> we're going on vacation. <laughs> we may have some flings along the way. Who knows what's gonna happen on this lovely stop? <laughs> I love it. And uh, so, when do you have a, a release date for the record? Or is it not release public date. knowledge? That, no public have, knowledge. Yet. I don't know. There's no public knowledge of the of the date yet. Okay. So I don't know if I can say. It's I didn't good. ask. <laughs> but soon, maybe like soon. around my birthday or something. Mm, okay, mm. I'll have to look up your birthday. Mm. <laughs> You're making me do some research. <laughs> uh, aha. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, do you have uh, Gucci Frames is the first song you put out? Uh, yes. Do you, what's the? Do you have a follow up ready? Like, what are you guys planning for that? Oh, we have a follow-up ready. Okay. We have everything ready. We've already shot the videos. Oh, so is there a video for Gucci Frame? There is a, vi a video for Gucci Frames coming soon. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I don't think I've seen it. Oh, no, night. it's not out yet. <laughs> but what can you tell us about the video? It's bomb. I look bomb. <laughs> we wear it. Oh, matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're wearing Gucci. <laughs> I was flying around in a harness. That's all I got. I love that. Did you shoot it during quarantine? Did shoot it during quarantine. So we were very like masks and hand sanitizer every five seconds. And, you know, like everybody had to take the COVID test. It was oh. very quarantine ish. Sure, sure. Were you like when quarantine hit or when, when COVID hit, were you? on the road were you doing anything that like it kind of actually when, when, you home? Quarant when quarantine hit i was just finishing shooting some stuff um in atlanta 
and it hit before I got to come back home. So when I got back to LA, all the grocery stores were like emptied and I had nothing in my oh, house. My I was gosh. like, what am I going to do? I had like DiGiorno <sighs> pizzas and ramen oh, yeah. and just like <laughs> whatever I could get my hands on. There was no tissue. I was like, I was working why would y'all do this y'all couldn't save me a piece a pack of tissue a uh, right yeah <laughs> dang <laughs> so that happened and then i've been in quarantine ever since yeah i know this is this is wild did you how did you feel about putting out gucci frames during the the lockdown or was that oh you didn't even think about not you know what i thought about not but um we were supposed to put out music well, like early in the year anyway. So when quarantine hit, it just kind of threw everyone back. And then there was just a lot of stuff happening in the world that I just, it just didn't feel right to put anything out. Like, it was just like, this isn't, this is not where my attention needs to be. It needs to be with helping however I can with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. um, helping with um, any of the LGBTQ issues we've been having with a lot of trans lives. I had a lot of work to do that was outside of music that I needed to give my attention to mm -hmm. when I could. So that's mostly where it was. And then once we felt like, okay, we can, we can put together a nice rollout for later on in the year. I was like, okay, well, we can do that. Because at the end of the day, my fans are still like, okay, girl, we are in quarantine. We would love to hear some new music sure. from you. We don't have anything else to do. And I'm like, why are y'all yelling at me getting all close in the camera and stuff? Like, that's a lot. Like y'all are, y'all are doing a lot, but I love I'm them. So glad I told right. you, I'm so glad I had you turn the camera on because this is the <laughs> Best interview I've ever done. This is so good. <laughs> I mean, you know, like when people get serious and they get all in the camera and like all close, like, dude, back up. <laughs> like I'll go on eight IG live and I'm like, so Azian, where's your new music? And I'm like, you're kind of close. It's coming. Stop yelling at me. Anytime I post a picture, they're like, yeah, you cute, but where's the music? And I'm like, can y'all just say my picture's nice? dang you just want to yell at me like this is so rude <laughs> oh my you should do stand-up you definitely have a career in stand-up uh, outside of your music I, career <laughs> I, every, uh, people say that often and i just be real serious and people think it's funny and i just be <laughs> i'm so for real <laughs> but you're so yeah oh, you're funny you're really funny <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> Don't ask me to say a joke because it's going to be corny and it's going to be horrible. And you're like, eh, maybe not. <laughs> well, now I want to hear your joke. I don't have any. Okay. <laughs> I have like why the chicken crossed the road type jokes and they're just not good. Like, what do not you call a deer with no eyes? A deer? What do you call a deer with no eyes? I don't know. What do you call a deer with I, no eyes? I have no idea. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> Told you, don't ask me. Yeah, you, you got corny jokes. I hadn't heard that one before. I don't really have because you have you have to be from the country to have that one. You have to know. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. So you, you need the accent. You <laughs> need the accent. It goes together. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's too funny. I've, I've had such a blast uh, talking with you. This has been so much fun. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you um, so much for having me. I do have one more question for you. I want to oh, know. Oh, man. I know. I'm that guy. I feel guy. like it's going to be serious. What is it? <laughs> do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, learn yourself. Um, study your craft. Um, be unapologetic about the things you want and what you want your music to be about. Um, and then when you're sending your stuff out, just make sure you mix it, mix it. It's important. Like I, so many people would send me records and be like, oh, I just want you to hear it. And then when I take the opportunity to listen to it, the mix is like so bad. I can't hear, like they're muddy, they're mushy. Like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm listening to. So it's like, I always tell aspiring songwriters and artists like, yo, study your craft, please know what you're talking about, no song structure, because if this is what you really want to do, there's a million people who aren't a novice, who aren't like beginners, and they really do this. So you're, you're coming in the game against people who are already established. So mm -hmm. study your craft so you know what you can do. And then the more different genres you study, the 
the more your music can evolve and change into things you didn't even think of. Um, and yeah, and again, be yourself, be you. Talk about what you want to talk about. Say it however you want to say it because it's your music and it should be about you and all the different types of music and the different ways we say things and the different perspectives, they matter. And everybody should be able to be heard. So that's it. Bring me the best word.